Connected Healthcare came into focus during the COVID-19 pandemic and is set to continue revolutionizing healthcare. Remotely monitoring a patient's well-being with a connected device presents a new way of thinking about healthcare. The Internet Medical of Things, or IMOT, market is expected to grow 23% to $1.84 billion by 2028, according to DataBridge Market Research. Singapore startup Elocare has created two IMOT devices. The first is a smart pillbox for medication compliance, and the second monitors the health of women entering menopause. Mabel, Alocare is innovating in the nascent Internet of Medical Things space. What are some of the technologies you're developing? We're developing two kind of technologies. So the first one is a wearable sensors for menopause women to check menopause health in midlife years. So this is in terms of bracelet or waistband, which comes with a mobile app. And another technology is to uh, manage medication intake for the elderly with multiple chronic conditions. And this can be deployed in the hospital or nursing home. Menopause is actually a very significant problem and it's underserved. And women are generally underserved in the medical field. What caused you to focus there? We originally started this company, we realized exactly like what you say, it's extremely underserved. And if we know the statistic, by 2025, there will be over 1 billion women entering menopause. But currently, only one in four women seeking care for the menopause symptom end up getting treated. What happened to three out of four? Yep, so that's number one. And if we see that women suffer from a range of short-term and long-term symptoms, and there's no way that help them navigate them right now by technologies. So we view that by using IoT and AI technologies, we can help them significantly change the standard of care and the scenario. What is the technology doing to help women that are suffering from menopause? The solution comes in terms of two components. Number one is a wearable sensors that can check key menopause symptoms like hot flashes, sleep disruption, heart palpitations, and it comes with a mobile app so women can actually see and visualize the data online anytime and also link to a caregiver's portal. So even caregivers can access to this data. Oh, and I see, and then construct a treatment plan yes, for that exactly. for, on an individual basis. Exactly. And so where are you at in terms of getting the technology to market? The two products that we have for the wearable for menopausal women, we are in the R&D stage of this. So we are partnering with key institutions in Singapore, including ASTAR and Singapore National University to co-develop this algorithm to track key menopausal symptoms. And for the other product, the Smart uh, Pew Box Medication Compliance Solution, we are piloting this with uh, public healthcare providers in Singapore, including National Healthcare Group and St. Louis Elder Care Centers in Singapore to co-develop and pilot and also co-commercialize this solution to the healthcare system here. So the, is the healthcare system setting aside funding to develop projects like yours? Yes, it's the great advantage in Singapore because I think after the pandemic and even traditionally, there's a lot of initiative on, in Singapore to help entrepreneurs get various funding and also opportunity to partner with public health sectors to co-develop the solution. So in a way, you don't have to navigate the complex system of regulation and cybersecurity on your own, but you can work with the key public sectors to do this together. Uh, Mabel, where are you at with the menopause wearable? So right now we are partnering with key institutions in Singapore, including Singapore National University and ASTAR to co-develop the algorithm to track key menopause symptoms. Because in the end, we also want this to be a key integration in whatever popular product that women are already using, so they don't have to buy a different wearable. With that being said, Mabel, beyond the menopause market, how underserved are women? So right now, women's health-centric technology are still extremely underfunded and undervalued. It only accounts for about 4% of the overall R&D funding in healthcare resources. And 65% of them are just focusing on fertility and not other areas. And it's appalling because women actually account for 80% of the consumer purchasing power and decisions in the healthcare industry. Well, and, and they're half the population. Yes, exactly. And up until very recently, women, especially in the child-bearing age, are typically ignored from clinical trials for a good reason, because it's more complex for the trials. And because of this, most of the 
products in the market about healthcare and medtech are not deemed to be equally safe or effective for women as men. Another big problem that you're tackling is the proper dosage of medication and initially trying to help elderly patients make sure they're getting the correct dosing of medication. How does the smart pill box work? Okay, so this is a very exciting problem as well because we all know that medication compliance is a classical problem, not only for the elderly, but for everyone. But in terms of the initial product, we are targeting the B2B solution for the hospital and the elder care centers because they have to manage many, many patients. The medication schedule for these elderly are very complex. So right. what we try to do is we have a hardware smart bill dispenser which come with a SaaS platform and using these two solutions Solution, both the caregivers and the end users can configure different kind of medication schedule no matter how complex it is. Wow.